So my name is Rebecca Brimfield. I am a paediatrician, so I don't have much experience of actual falls. Um, but I've spent the last year as a Welsh Clinical Leadership Fellow working within medical education in Cardiff and Vale. So we came to ASPE last year and realised that actually we're a little bit behind the time when it came to our simulation structure and what we were doing um, in Cardiff. So we wanted to go back to our um, hospital and try and figure out new innovations that we could use to involve the multidisciplinary team within our simulation structure. Um, we also had the opportunity this year to open a new simulated ward area. It's a four bedded area and it's actually situated within our hospital. So we don't have to take staff off site anymore to do the simulations in a big way. We can bring them in for short periods of time and run short snappy simulations involving the whole multidisciplinary team without having to have a full morning or a full afternoon for these sessions. Um, so thank you for the opportunity for presenting our Falls project. Um, so where did we start? So when I started my clinical leadership year, um, we went and approached the patient safety team within our hospital to find out what they felt were the important issues that they could deal, we could provide a solution with the simulation. And one of the things that we were really struggling with, as many hospitals are, um, was complying with the audit for the national force. We were performing very badly on this of all the measures. So therefore, we had a problem statement that we wanted to move forward with, and this is there are inconsistencies in staff quality of completion and compliance within Cardiff and Vale Health Board in patient falls procedures, and that results in potential patient harm. So how did we then, sorry, that was clearly going to go on before. Um, so how did we then move forward with this and pick our ward and find the people that were going to work through us with this simulation? So we look for where the problems were and then look for engagement of those teams. And this is a Pareto diagram just showing you where the instance of falls were happening and where the most common places were um, the falls were happening in the health board. And one of these is Ward A4. Now we approached um, Ward A4. It's a medical ward um, and it's a very busy, high turnover medical ward with a lot of competing demands on their time. But their sister, Helen Bonello, was absolutely fantastic. She was really engaged in getting a new novel way to manage falls on their ward and was very committed to releasing her staff for the time for training and also committed herself to um, rolling this out and making her team enthusiastic. So we ran a quality improvement with her, um, a quality improvement project with her, one of her band fives and a healthcare assistant. So a full multidisciplinary team of people that were working on the ward at the time. We took them through our health board's own quality improvement um, structure, which is a LIPS program. It's a basically a couple of um, days away from the ward where we're giving them information about quality improvement, information about management and psychology and happiness and a, a whole well-rounded program on quality improvement. So it helped us with the engagement with this project because we were able to offer the staff on that ward, including the healthcare assistants, which don't get much investment in them um, from health boards. We were able to give them a certification and qualifications within quality improvement as well as taking part in this project. So what did we actually do? Obviously, I'm at ASPE, so we did some simulation. Um, we developed a patient story simulation, um, focusing on the admission of a patient, uh, assessing their falls risk, then management of a minor fall, and then unfortunately this patient was very unlucky and they did then go on to have a major unwitnessed fall, and we ran those simulations as well. So we, I wrote the simulations, uh, which did provide a little bit of a stumbling block because um, the first round of simulations that I wrote, the vital signs that I put for the patient being a paediatrician, were significantly different to the expected vital signs for an adult patient and would have in fact made my patient very much more sicker than I wanted them to be. Um, so I did then collaborate with my friend who's a geriatrician and she kind of toned down my heart rate a little bit and um, turned down my respiratory rate and made it a lot more realistic and a lot less likely to score a nine on the news chart. Um, so we had some significant challenges. Some were expected. Obviously, it's a busy ward. We have to free up the staff to be able to do these simulations, but some were unexpected. So I have a medical background. I have done simulation for my entire medical career, my entire life. I was working with nurses. I presumed that they also had an understanding of simulation. So when I first came to run the first simulation session with the sister in charge and the core team, I said, right, let's try out this simulation. Let's see how it works to be met with a what simulation, what do we even do about this? So we had to take a couple of steps back before we could move forward to teach people the principles of simulation and how you then go about providing simulation on your board. 
And also my position, I am a, was a temporary member of staff. I have actually now gone back to clinical practice in neonates. I don't work on, in Cardiff and Vale anymore. I don't work on falls. Um, I have no ongoing commitment to this. Um, so it needed to be a nurse led project and it needed to be run by the people that were on the ward and they needed to develop the skills to order to run the simulation so I wouldn't have to be there when um, to move on. But we've overcome these challenges and we've worked really hard to make sure that the whole team understood simulation and they have actually now been trained to conduct the simulations themselves and they're confident in doing so. So these were our aims. We wanted to increase staff compliance with the false procedure. We had a well-structured procedure in place and we wanted to know that staff were using it. We wanted to increase their confidence, okay, it's right down from the healthcare assistants to the F1 doctor that's on the ward. We wanted to make sure that they were all confident in managing the falls as per the procedure. And we wanted to increase the knowledge there. Okay, so this is it in action. So that is our new shiny ward. Um, and actually this is taken from our, the launch of the ward. So the team that I was doing it with, they were very nervous, but they did do it in front of everybody at the opening of the ward um, with the chief execs coming around and press and everybody being there as well. So it was a very big thing for them to do. The person lying on the floor in the reindeer pyjamas is Liz. She's our technician. She's a fantastic actress um, and embraces the role of an elderly person having a fall very well. Um, and the person in Navy standing up there is actually Helen and she had developed the confidence from not really doing simulation to lead the simulation by the time we opened the ward. So she'd moved on very, um, quite a lot forward. So it's just what was going on. So within Cardiff and Vale, we weren't really measuring the success of our simulation programmes before we came to ASPE last year. We weren't looking at confidence, we weren't looking at knowledge, we were still kind of stuck asking people whether they enjoyed the course and whether the facilities were nice to them and we gave them enough coffee. So we did work very hard amongst all of our simulations at measuring something that was actually useful to us. And we did do this with this full sections in three different ways. So we audited the compliance with the falls procedure. We gave a knowledge questionnaire, which is still ongoing and I don't yet have the results for, um, to audit with specific questions. What do you do if, what happens if? So checking that people do know the falls procedure. But also we asked them to rate pre and post simulation their confidence on a like it scale. We also use a qualitative question on there. Um, asking for a real life example of when they had experienced a fall or when they'd been asked to manage this as part of their day to day life to try and already embed it back into the culture that they had on the board. So are they more confident? Yes, they are. Um, so you can see this is a graph that shows the pre um, pre simulation confidence versus the post simulation um, confidence. And you can see there has been a shift to um, the more confident um, sides of that structure. Um, the only one that is statistically significant is confidence in the knowledge of the um, protocol. The other ones have shown improvement, but they're not quite significant enough to count as a significant p value. But it's a slow progress. This isn't supposed to be a quick fix simulation product that's going to go bam in, we're going to fix this all. This is about education, bringing the teams on board and giving them new ways that they can deal with falls rather than just expecting them to go follow the old um, systems. And most importantly, what do they think? Um, so the staff love it. Um, they, we fully involve every member of the team. The dietitians have been asked to be involved because they may come across a fall on the ward. Speech and language therapists have been trained. Physiotherapists have been involved. And we've also made the team more aware of using things like the hover jack in our, um, where it's found, because we don't have one every ward, it's in one cupboard, how you get it in the middle of the night, and then actually how you use it safely. So we've incorporated training within these simulations as well. So they really, really like it and they think it's a good investment. Is it translating onto the ward and into clinical work? So this again is a work in progress. I'd say approximately half of our staff on the ward have now been through a simulation um, and have been trained as somewhat in falls. So it is, a, a, like I say, a work in progress. We have shown um, from February we had 81% compliance and in June we were up to 85. So there is a small increase there with compliance. Did dip again in August, but this coincides obviously with the new foundation doctors and they were yet to be part of the full simulation or involved in that. So it's limited evidence so far but it will need expansion and it needs continuing investment and continuing ongoing simulations rather than just a one-off intervention. So we have demonstrated that the use of a simulation program for education of a multidisciplinary staff or team has significantly improved confidence in the prevention and management of falls. 
But most importantly, we're equipping that multidisciplinary team with the day-to-day skills to fulfill their role and improve their skills in patient management and hopefully improve patient safety. So where to next? So we've been running this actually in the four-bedded simulation wars because it's been where the teams have felt they needed to be to gain their confidence in running simulation sessions. But we plan on moving this in situ. We've been running all three sims together as a morning, like about approximately 90 minutes to two hours session. But actually we can run them individually. We don't have to have that big time commitment. And if we move it in situ, we can do it where the falls are happening on the ward and potentially identify other hazards that are happening through measles diagrams and running simulations where we know the falls are happening and simulating the time of day that they are happening. We don't have to be structured and we don't have to be pre-planned. We can ad hoc react to situations. And if we have a spare place in the wall, a spare bed or a spare five minutes, we can use those simulations to do it. So where do we go from here? This is just one ward. We're obviously a very big hospital. We want to implement this full straight simulation training throughout the ward and get engagement. So we're presenting this work at our clinical senates, at our ground rounds. We're working with nurse educators and we're working with different um, ward managers and ward sisters in order to try and figure out a way that we can move this simulation um, to a wider audience within Cardiff and Vale. We're presenting it as an example of good practice and we don't think that this is going to solve all the problems with falls, but it is a piece of the jigsaw that can help empower staff to believe that they are being listened to and modify things based on how they are doing it. Thank you very much.